you want to know what really sold me on Manga Studio? It was the introduction of rulers to the program. This has taken an idea that if you're a traditional artist, having things like rulers and curves and all these ways to add life to your lines was something that really wasn't in the digital realm. Usually you would have to use something like the direct draw tool to create your lines and curves. And ever since Manga Studio has been in existence, they've had these virtual rulers, which allows us to create the lines that we want with the life that we want them to have. So there are a lot of rulers in this program, and I'm going to break them down into a couple of sections. The first is all about the basic rulers. So what I'm going to do is talk about these basic rulers, how to create them, how to draw along them, how to manipulate them. And then we're going to come back here and show how I can use these rulers to continue on my refining process. So let's bring up the new canvas. Now let's bring up the rulers, which are located here on the tools palette. And remember, you may not see this icon here because it shares real estate with the direct draw tool, the frame tool, and so on. So look for this general area and then look for the ruler sub tool. Now there are four basic rulers here, the linear ruler, the curve ruler, the figure ruler, and the ruler pen. How they're created is actually very similar to how you create lines and curves with the direct draw tool. With the linear ruler, you just click for your start point, drag and release, and there's your straight line. The curve ruler is more like the continuous curve ruler where you just click to place points and slowly build your curve. And then when you're done, you just double click. Or if you wanted to make it into a shape, you just come all the way back up to the top and you have your shape. The figure ruler creates figures and you have three options to choose from. We have the polygon, which you just click, drag. And because this is set for adjust angle after fixed, after you release, you just set your angle and click to set your ruler. You can set the number of vertices from here. Right now it's set to six. Let's bump it up to eight. Incidentally, if you don't see it here, it may be because it's hidden. You just click the plus button and that'll bring this up. Right now it's set to minus to hide it, plus to bring it back. We also have the elliptical ruler. So we can create an ellipse. So click, drag, set the angle and release. If you want to have it as a pure circle, hold down your shift key if you have your keyboard nearby, and then click, drag, release, and click. And you have your rectangle one. So click, drag, set your angle. If you want to keep it at 45 degree increments, hold down your shift key and it'll lock it, and then click. And if you want to have it as a pure square, hold down your shift key, click, drag, and set your angle and click to release. And finally, we have the ruler pen, which is great because it just works by drawing like you would with a pen. Draw like this, and then when you're done, release, and there's your ruler pen. Now, I'm gonna come over to the direct draw tool briefly and draw a couple of straight lines as an example. Now, what we've created here are two very nice, very useful straight lines. What I'm gonna do is switch to the pen tool and the G pen specifically, because I have it set to a nice big brush, I'm gonna show the difference between this and this. And that right there is the difference between drawing along a ruler and drawing a straight line direct tool. And the cool thing is because it automatically snaps, I could go really back and forth and not even touch the line. It'll just snap to the ruler. I wanna make it light there. Just kinda keep going until the end. And that's it. And for things like the shape tool, I can add depth. So if I want light lines up here, and then make it thicker here and really thick at the bottom, and work my way and add a little bit of three dimensionality to it. You know, same thing here light, heavy. I think you get the basic idea here thin to thick to thin. Let's say I've created this ruler pen. And I realize, oh, it's not quite the shape I want or this curve. I'm going to clear out this. Now I'm going to go to the object select tool. I'm going to click the ruler. And you'll notice this bounding box that appears, as well as all these control points. And these were the control points that I used to create this curve. Now I can actually go and readjust the size, both horizontally and vertically, and the shape. I can adjust the angle, and I can even adjust these control points and reshape how this curve ruler works. I can do this even with the 
Configure tools. I can resize. Now let's say I want to change this rectangle to a trapezoid. I just click and drag these control points, like so. And now, instead of a rectangle ruler, I have a trapezoid ruler. So now that we have a basic idea of how the rulers work, let's apply this to the sample page we've been working on. And as an example, I'm going to work on this first panel up here, and I'm going to work a little bit more on this truck, as well as a little bit of the taxi cab we have here. So I'm going to come over here, select the direct draw, switch to ruler, grab my linear ruler. I'm going to hold down the shift key and release. Incidentally, if you don't have your keyboard nearby, head over to the tool properties briefly and click step of angle. And what that does is it automatically will lock your linear ruler to any angle that you want within like 45 degrees. It'll snap automatically to 45 degree increments. Go to the curve ruler and I'm just going to do a quick click, click, and work a little bit on this bumper here. Now I'll switch over to the pencil tool. And here's another cool little trick. And this is going to be helpful as I work on this truck here. I could switch back to the object select tool, but again, if you have a keyboard nearby, hold down the command key on the Mac and just click the ruler and you'll see it's been selected. Now I can just drag this down, come over here, release, and it goes right back to my pencil. And now I just start drawing. And again, I'm gonna switch over to the pen tool so I can again show the difference between what I drew with the curve tool here and what I can draw with the ruler. Just click and drag along the ruler, add a little life to that. Oh, the shape is not quite right. Maybe I'll undo that. Hold down the command key or switch the object select tool. Select it, tweak the shape a little bit, like so. That looks a little better. And I'll release and then I'll start drawing. I wanna work on this character a bit more. And I realize that if I draw here, it's going to start automatically snapping to the virtual ruler. I don't want that to happen. So first I'm going to undo. And then I'm going to come up over here to the command bar and I'm going to turn off the snap to ruler button. With that off, you'll notice it now has gone from dark gray to matching the rest of the command bar. I'll switch back to the pencil tool. I'll start drawing freehand and it doesn't even snap at all to that ruler or that ruler. I'll undo. And when I turn that snap back on, I start drawing, snaps off, I get to go free. Now, before I go, I'm going to come back here to the new canvas because you've probably noticed that there are three buttons here. There's snap to ruler, and then there are these two other ones. This one is called snap to grid. Now, snap to grid is for the grid feature in Manga Studio, which you can bring up by coming to the main menu and selecting view grid. And this brings up a basic grid. When snap to grid is turned on, I have my pencil tool selected. I'll turn off basic ruler so I don't accidentally snap to those. Now when I draw, it just snaps to all the grid lines that you see on the canvas. Now, it might not be something that's useful right now when I'm working on the sample page, but let's say that I was kind of planning out an idea, a floor plan of a scene or whatever, and it'd be nice to have this ability to just kind of draw along the grid lines and map out my room or whatnot very easily. And then finally, there's the snap to special ruler. And we're going to talk about that one in the next video.